Whenever someone mentions the word greenhouse, many people think of a building like this, made out of glass or thick plastic and housing lots of plants on the inside. But that meaning has begun to change over the past several decades. Now when we use the word greenhouse, a lot of people will actually think of the atmosphere. They do that because of the way the gases in the air react with things like light and heat. So let's take a closer look at how the atmosphere is like one of these buildings. Light is a wave that doesn't need a medium to travel. You see, light has no trouble traveling through the glass into the greenhouse, but that same light can also travel back out again. But light energy can change into heat energy. As the light travels into the greenhouse, it's absorbed by things like plants, the ground, even you and me. Now plants take this light energy and combine it with carbon dioxide and water to produce its own food since they don't have mouths. Some of this energy, as it changes and transforms into a new type of energy, is radiated out as heat. However, this heat has a little more trouble traveling through things like glass. What we have here is just a very simple setup of how the heat energy works in a greenhouse. We have our heater on one side of this glass, which is separating two dark aluminum objects. The dark color should absorb light and heat very quickly, and the aluminum will distribute it very fast. So this shouldn't take very long. So once I turn on the heat energy, we should begin to see a difference in the temperature from the one that's on the same side as the heater versus the one that's just on the other side of the piece of glass. And you'll notice already, after just a few seconds, already the can that's on the side of the glass, the same as the heater, is warming up quickly with temperatures climbing into the 70s. Whereas the can outside of the glass is remaining somewhere around room temperature in the 60s. If you look up into the sky, just imagine that there are hundreds of millions of gas molecules moving around. Just like the glass in a greenhouse building, these gases act like sort of a protective layer. See this glass? It's tinted. We can tint glass all different types of colors for different reasons. This one is tinted dark to block some of the light to keep it from transforming into heat energy. This helps to keep the inside of the car just slightly cooler than if it was perfectly clear. One particular gas that exists in the air is ozone. Now, if we were to breathe in this ozone, we'd be goners out of here. It'd kill us. Luckily, it mainly exists way up in the air, near the height of the highest flying airplanes and above, in a layer of the atmosphere known as the stratosphere. This ozone acts like tinted glass, protecting us from harmful sunlight called ultraviolet radiation, or UV light. Without it, it would be a whole lot more dangerous standing outside. Most gases, especially the ones near us here in the troposphere at the ground, don't really affect light much at all. A small amount can be reflected into outer space, but most of it makes it to the surface and is absorbed by whatever it hits. Just like in the greenhouse, this light is used and transformed into heat energy. So when it's hot outside, it's not because of light that's coming down from the sun, it's because that light energy is being absorbed by the ground and changed into heat energy. And then that heat energy is actually released up into the air. That's what makes it hot. Think about this. We make roads, sidewalks, and driveways out of different types of materials. The light colored materials reflect more light, meaning less of that light energy is transformed into heat energy. Dark colored surfaces absorb a lot of light and have more energy to make heat out of. That's why it's often hotter standing on a dark asphalt like you'd see in a parking lot versus standing on a much lighter colored material like the cement used in many driveways. Once this heat begins to travel up on its journey to outer space, some of it hits what we call greenhouse gases. These are things like carbon dioxide, methane, and even water vapor. These gases can absorb the heat and then re-radiate it in all types of different directions, including back down towards us. This increases the amount of heat in the air, warming things up. 
This heating effect from greenhouse gases is important because without it, there would be no life on Earth. It would just be too cold. The idea is that if we continue to pump greenhouse gases into the air, it's going to get better and better at trapping heat, causing things to continue to warm up, making it very uncomfortable and causing a whole lot of new problems. Luckily, nature has a system set up for cleaning greenhouse gases out of the air. The problem is humans are messing up this system. We are cutting down trees and clearing land to make things for us. And on top of that, we burn a lot of fossil fuels. Every time you see a vehicle driving or you use electricity, there was most likely some fossil fuel burned which created more carbon dioxide. We also tend to do things that release methane into the air, like fracking or hydraulic fracturing and poorly maintained landfills. Now it looks like nature is unable to keep up with the amount of greenhouse gases being put into the air. And on average, global temperatures seem to continue going up. Now, this isn't unusual. If you look at the temperature in the past, Earth has always had its ups and downs when it comes to temperature. But all of that was naturally occurring. If you look at the carbon dioxide levels, they also went up and down until humans started to build things like electrical power plants and factories. The question now is, how much is too much? And what does that mean for our world? Some people believe it could melt the ice at the poles, causing sea level to rise. Those places that are near the ocean could eventually become completely underwater, meaning we would lose Florida altogether. Luckily, people are going around and changing some of their old habits, like they're going out and buying LED light bulbs, which use less electricity. We can also do things to try to decrease the amount of stuff that ends up in a landfill, like recycling or starting a compost bin. And companies are beginning to invest in clean, renewable resources. And although these are good ideas, they ultimately don't fix the problem we've created. It just helps to slow it down. The big question now is what are you going to do to help solve this problem as we head into the future?